Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the first in a series of C++ tutorials. First thing we're going to do, we're going to get right into it, is get our compiler. Now for this, you're going to want to go to www.codeblocks.org. Here, you will find the compiler. Now what you want to go do is click on downloads, and then download the binary release and then come down here to the Windows section as long as you're using Windows obviously if you're using Linux go down here although all these tutorials are pretty much like aimed at Windows users anyway the one you want to download is this one the one with Mingw included which is our compiler the rest is just an interface for you which you can use the compiler with Call but yeah, there you go. So download that, install it, just use all the default options, it should come out fine. And then what you'll get at the end is when you run it, it will look somewhat like this. Except it might pop up like, uh, I don't know, something new when you first start it. Just close it. And when it pops up this, obviously, just close it. Now, uh, if this tab does pop up, which it should do, just click on create a new project. However, if it didn't appear and you're like, oh my god, I've just got a gray square, what do I do? Just go up to file, and then new, and then project. Now this window should pop up. Uh, what we're going to go for is a console application. This is basically all the different templates you can start with. It means that the compiler will basically pre-set up your program with a template for any of these things. So say I wanted to use the SDL library or I wanted to make a completely blank project, I'd click on that. But we're wanting to make a console application. Don't worry if you don't know what libraries are or anything just yet. It's fine, we'll go over those later. Uh, just next on this, we're gonna wanna select C++ project title. We'll call it Hello World. And in fact, you might want to create a dictionary specifically for these lessons. So I'll type in lessons, uh, or even C++ lessons. This should make me a dictionary. If it doesn't, I will panic and be all sad, like, too bad I can't edit these files just yet because it's not compatible with Sony Vegas and I need to find a better method of recording. But for now, this is what we got. So um, this should fill in automatically and this will tell you pretty much where it's going to go. Uh, yeah, so that's fine. Super cool. Uh, just ignore this. This is kind of basically what you do here is you can change where you want it to compile to when you're, you make your program, when you want it to be all translated into something the computer can read, this is where it will go. But you don't need to change any of these because these are pretty much in the right place for you right now. So finish. And we should have a little project open in the side window here. Um, so this is quite a cool thing, it's easy to keep track of projects and you can have multiple ones open at the same time if you want to jump between them. So um, go into the Hello World one and then go into the Sources folder and in here is Main CPP. Double click that. Now basically what Main CPP is, is the first pro uh, file in your program that will be compiled. This is pretty much always going to be the first file unless you specify otherwise, but uh, don't worry about that. It's fine. So just know that you're going to put all your main code in here. Now, notice that there's already a program written for you. This is what the template does. It also sets up some settings in the background, which we'll learn about some other time. But for now, we're going to try and run this program that's already written for you. This is the one that we're going to actually be making. So, uh, yeah, it's an early example for you. So go up to the build menu, then go to build and run. What this does is it basically translates all this code into something that the computer can read and this is the output so what this program does is outputs hello world there you go and uh, now this could be run on any computer but I'll, I'll go into that later but for now we're just gonna delete everything that they've already had put in there start afresh so I can go through it with you so first thing I'm going to teach you is comments. Notice this episode, this episode, this tutorial is going to be very basic just for this lesson. 
Um, I'm just going to kind of rush over things, not give you great detail on them, and we'll go over them more carefully later on. But for now, this is what a comment is. It's two forward slashes, and then whatever you type after it on the same line is a comment. And what a comment is, is it's a bit of text that the compiler will completely ignore. So once you've put these two slashes, you can type whatever you want, and the computer will just pretend it's not there. So what we're going to enter in is the name of the program. So hello world. You don't have to do this, but it's good practice just to do that. And then do another double forward slash. And then I'm going to write my name. Jules. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's another good thing just so that people know it's your code that you've written. And you did not steal it off everyone, anyone or whatever or someone hasn't stolen it off you. Yeah, you get what I mean. So the next thing we're going for, the first bit of true C++ code is going to be hash include pointy bracket um, io stream then close pointy bracket. What this does is it includes all the functions of io stream. We're going to learn about functions later, but basically they're like commands like I want to send this to the screen then that that's handled by this yeah so you're going to be referencing this a lot but yeah again i will go over that probably next lesson actually i'm not sure sometime soon just know that you need that and another thing we're going to write up here actually is using namespace std now, what this does is it sets our namespace to std. Another thing that I will go over later, it's kind of complicated and you don't really need to know about it just yet. Just know that it helps with the organization stuff and just makes everything run nice and smooth, like, nice and smooth. So next, we're going to write our main function, which is the function that always runs at the start of a program. Again, you don't need to know what a function is yet, but uh, yeah, it's what we need to do. So int main and then open bracket, close bracket. We'll add some stuff in here another time, but for now you don't need anything. We're, we're just going to keep things simple. Um, and next line and then open curly brace bracket. And the good thing about code blocks is it closes them off for you as well, which is pretty cool. Um, something that I should tell you right now actually is Spaces do not matter, and new lines do not matter. I could compile that right now, and it would work just fine. Well, it doesn't have any code in it yet, so that would kind of might throw up an error. Actually, I'm kind of interested. Will you throw up an error? No, it doesn't. Okay, l let me demonstrate then that you can have as many spaces as you want, and it will still work. Ta-da! See? Obviously, if you made a mistake, if you don't have a space, however, it will throw up an error. Boom. Error. And also, C++ is case sensitive, so if I was like, capital N namespace, then it's going to throw up an error. This is something that comes up fairly often with newbie programmers. You enter in a capital letter somewhere where you shouldn't have, or something like that. It's, it's a problem, and it's quite annoying, but you'll get used to it. So, the f pretty much the only bit of code that does anything uh, that we're going to enter today is going to be right here. C out. Now, this is a function from the IO stream library. And then two pointy brackets that way. This is basically, think of it as, well, actually, let's enter in the whole code and I'll explain it. Then you're going to want to open parentheses. And then in here, you can type whatever you want and it will come up at the end of the program. So, uh, well, when we run the program, that's what it will s type out. Well, Display, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> so, hello world. Um, this is me, Jules, from Knowledge. Oh, God. Knowledge. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Highway. Forgive my typing right now, by the way. I am in the process of changing the way I type, so I'm a bit woozy. But that will all sort itself out fairly quickly. Now, at the end of this, make sure you close off the parentheses, by the way, you're going to want to put a semicolon. Now, semicolons are sort of like full stops in C++. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You have to have one after using namespace std. I don't know if the 
compiler edited that in for me, or I just didn't think of it when I put it in. I just did it by accident. But yeah, it's kind of like a full stop in that it tells the program that this is the end of the line. Uh, so it's, it's kind of like taking a new line, except from you have to have it there, or otherwise you'll get an error. And then after this, we're going to type return zero. Now, technically, you do not need this for your program to run, but it's good to have because all it says is once the program has ran through, it will, well, once this function has run all the way through, it will return the value zero to the program, telling it that there has been no errors throughout execution. So we're all good. The Burgall. So let's try running our program. Build and run. There we go. Hello world. This is me, exclamation mark, Jules from Knowledge Highway. And that's that's the program, pretty much. So let me go over this line. I don't think I went over it. Um, this kind of think of this as you're pointing this these arrows are pointing to this, and this is basically pointing into the C out. That's an easy way to remember that you're pointing this text into this function. Uh, at least that's the way I remember it. So now we've got our program. Uh, it's possible to run it on any computer. So go into your lessons and then go into Hello World and then go into bin. Whoops, just put bin in the wrong place. My bad. This won't happen unless you move bin by accident into object. Anyway, double click on bin, then debug. And then within debug, there is the file. Hello World. So run it. Oh. It flashes up and disappears. Why is that? Because it doesn't do that when I do it here. Well, the reason why it stops here is because Codeblocks adds, adds in a little bit of debug code. Wow, I can't speak right now. Um, which is this, which basically pauses the program at the end and tells you some details. The process returns zero, which is, means it did not have any errors. But we want to be able to use this program on any computer and have it pause. So we're going to have to write a little bit more code. Um, so up here in the include region where we wrote the first include, <laughs> add another include. So hash include open pointy bracket and then we're going to type windows.h. Now this is another header file that we're including which basically holds all the Windows functions. So it's good to have when you're programming something for Windows. And with this, we get the function system, or system, if you're going to pronounce it properly. And then after you type that out, uh, open up brackets, then parentheses, and then pause. Now this is basically like a command prompt um, command. So it's, it's a system command, really. So you're running a Windows system command from out of your program. It's kind of weird right, to explain. That's what it does. If you need any more information on that, I'll probably have something more on it later. But we're not going to be using this very often, to be honest. This is probably one of the few times we'll actually need it, and maybe the next few lessons. But once you've got that in, build and run. And hello, world. This is me, Knowledge Highway. Press any key to continue. And then it will bring up the code. So there you go. Uh, a couple of other things, I guess. For your output, you can put a backslash n and then type some more stuff. Then backslash n. Basically, what backslash n is is new line. So build and run. And see, it's on a separate line. And then it's on a separate line as well. Cool. You can also do this another way, which is put some more pointy brackets in the way and then put end L which stands for end line <laughs> and then run it and there's another new line so cool that's pretty much everything for this tutorial um, I hope you got something out of it if you didn't then stick around there'll be more on more detailed subjects let me find my stop button um, so yes yeah, see you in the next lesson for more information we'll probably be going over variables Okay, one thing that I totally forgot to add is that if you go into your program, so I made it in C++ lessons and then hello world, go back into bin, then back into debug. Now that we've fixed that problem by adding that system pause, you can run this and it will come up with this, your final program. 
And this can be run on any computer ever. So if I move this to my desktop to simulate someone else's computer, they can just be like, oh, hey, there's an application. And then double click it, and it will come up with your program. So there you go. Done.